A quick disclaimer before I begin. I'll be using the classic version of Catherine for the basis of this video as I've yet to play Catherine Full Body. Of all the games I've played, none are quite like Catherine. It uses a distinct personality that not many games can match. As soon as I was thrust into this strange gameplay setting, I knew I was hooked. To me, Catherine is a pinnacle among puzzle games, but before getting into why that is, let's go over the basic structure first. We play as Vincent Brooks, who is easygoing and drifts aimlessly through life. As a result of him running into confusion in his romantic life regarding his deviating opinions between two girls that both go by the name of Catherine, the player is forced to take control of Vincent in his supernatural nightmares where he will embark on his journey to true freedom. Each night in one of these nightmares you'll have to complete a different stage that consists of multiple different floors of puzzle platforming challenges. If you manage to make it through the night, the story will progress to the next morning. You'll be partaking in social activities and interacting with various characters throughout the day. However, once Vincent arrives home at night, you are thrust right back into his nightmares where you will have to solve various moving block puzzles. The puzzles in Catherine for the most part are displayed very clearly to the player. They explain themselves very well. From the get-go, the player can independently conclude what their objective is while also having a rough expectation of how an object will react before attempting to interact with it. For example, you can predict that you can slip on ice blocks, therefore you will have to be more strategic with your movement. Not only does this allow the player to dive into the gameplay quicker, but it will also allow them to learn and understand the puzzles faster. The interface on the left side of the screen assists with this immediate comprehension of the player's objective, as it shows you that to solve the puzzle and progress, you must reach the top of the tower. Even so, it reveals where exactly you are on the tower and how far you need to go. As for how to climb the tower itself, the player will need to navigate the puzzle by pushing, pulling, hopping and hanging from the blocks that make up each level. The player will pick up on both the controls and the basic ways in which blocks react to each other fairly quickly. I feel as though the fundamental mechanics and ideas behind Catherine's puzzles are made straightforward enough for the player to understand by virtue of how well each puzzle explains itself. Catherine's puzzles are presented from a third person view. This factor also assists in making the gameplay easier to grasp as you can move the camera in alternate directions in case you need to plan ahead or perform a specific manoeuvre more simply. The way puzzles are represented in Catherine make for a better experience as the player can solve and analyse puzzles more comfortably. The overall presentation of the puzzles was masterfully executed, the puzzles felt inviting and rewarding. The designers subtly pushed the player towards the correct solution due to the block placement across the various stages, yet this still never made the answer feel obvious. It is clear that experimentation is encouraged as there's no single route to victory. Catherine's puzzles do a stellar job of keeping the player on their toes. The levels are designed in a way where there are multiple different puzzles baked into one large puzzle. These smaller obstacles are broken up with checkpoints and set staircases or blocks for you to climb until shortly you confront another challenge. This ensures the puzzle to work and flow well, as the developers are using a small amount of space. Not only does this help the player to interpret and understand the puzzle, but less miscommunication can occur. As I mentioned earlier, there is no single route when it comes to unravelling Catherine's puzzles. They are challenging and encourage the player to experiment. Objects that might seem useless initially might be your ticket to victory if you attempt to use them in unexpected ways. For example, if there's no way for you to climb up a tower, why not collapse it by disposing of the blocks at the bottom? Tackling a puzzle this way causes the blocks in your final objective to fall, creating a more simplified solution. This is just one example of Catherine making each piece to its puzzles feel relevant. Each stage never feels too drawn out, instead Catherine's puzzles respects the player's time while throwing a curveball that's bound to make you scratch your head. I really admire the destruction of Catherine's gameplay in Vincent's Nightmares. Like most games, each subsequent level becomes more challenging for the player. Catherine manages to teach the player new mechanics and unique ways to navigate its puzzles between each floor in an extremely interesting and engaging way. When you complete a tower, the player will be transferred to a hub of sorts where they can save their game and talk to NPCs. These NPCs are actually your friends from the real world that have managed to find themselves in the same nightmarish situation as Vincent. Although you're climbing the tower by yourself, speaking with these NPCs comes with a strong sense of assurance that Vincent isn't in this alone. He's not the only person that's messed up in life and because of that you feel united as a group in a way. 
It is in these hub areas throughout the game where you will have the option to learn advanced mechanics to make your puzzle platforming experience a little easier by speaking with people to learn new techniques. It's a different and meaningful way for the player to better understand the methodology behind utilizing Catherine's mechanics to their fullest potential. Not only that, but there's an added motivation to converse with NPCs as it gives the player a more comprehensible insight into its teams and characters. Catherine doesn't force its tutorials down your throat either. In fact, learning techniques of the NPCs you'll come across in Vincent's Nightmares is entirely optional. The game goes about teaching them to the player in such a clever way as there is some weight behind the interactions and dialogue when learning these techniques. I mentioned earlier, I think Catherine is a remarkably unique game. It's ambitious and unlike anything else you ever play. An original yet simple core mechanic of moving blocks has been made interesting in Catherine. The mysterious world and main gameplay setting inside the nightmares of a man in a serious romantic conflict adds a layer of suspense and uncertainty to already mysterious puzzles. The intense yet expertly composed orchestral music serves to amplify the feeling of mystery as it evokes a spine-chilling mood. The riveting story throughout the game gives the player yet another incentive to continue solving their way to victory while also finding out what turn the plot will take next. Never have I been so immersed in a puzzle game to the point where I was eager to uncover something new and experiment with its systems. When I was struggling with a puzzle I was forced to think and act quickly as to how best I could utilise the different types of blocks that I was working with as a means to ascend a tower. You'll encounter some hectic and challenging moments where you will be forced to experiment and decipher what the most efficient method of climbing is, but that's the height of the overall fun factor in Catherine, and it is so gratifying to finally complete a level you were stuck on for ages. In a lot of video games, the player could have to face off against a highly menacing boss in an extravagant encounter. However, it's not always crafted in a meaningful way. The implementation of symbolic and thematic value in a unique boss fight will make for a more climactic experience and it'll be infinitely more impactful as a result. The boss levels in Catherine are presented in a special way to say the least. They're thrilling from a gameplay perspective, but they also reflect in the story. The bosses themselves are manifestations of Vincent's real-world problems. For instance, the boss named Doom's Bride takes the form of a monstrous version of his girlfriend Catherine. But there's a catch. I mentioned earlier how Vincent is an easygoing person. He doesn't see the need to rush into big changes or responsibilities like marriage or having a child. While on this specific encounter, Catherine is in a wedding dress, a prospect that really frightens him. The same thing can be said for the boss encounter with the child. Catherine tells him that she's pregnant and it was a lot for Vincent to process. The creepy designs of the bosses successfully strive to intensify the level particularly the one against the child. It really caught me off guard. Just when I thought I was used to the mechanics, I was met with an encounter so petrifying that it caused me to consistently stumble, leading to several deaths. Although, there was one confrontation that stood out to me more than any other, Shadow Vincent. Catherine puts a unique spin on the typical boss fight formula as the player doesn't actually fight them head on. Instead, you have to frantically ascend a tower and hope you can escape before it's too late. This is symbolic to Vincent's personality and how he goes about tackling his problems in life. He seems to mindlessly glide over every hurdle that comes his way. He's afraid of change and so he attempts to escape it. In regard to this boss specifically, Vincent is running from his own shadow, a darker version of himself. At this point in the story, he thinks he's starting to go crazy. He's not in a good spot with either Catherine, and he exclaims to his friends that he has come to a realization regarding who he wants to pursue. However, on the inside, Vincent is afraid to accept himself and is still yet to discover what he truly wants in life. These feelings are reflected in this boss fight as the main reason this boss sets itself apart from the others, at least from a gameplay standpoint, is the lighting. Once you reach a certain point in the level, Shadow Vincent alters the lighting of the tower and so it will constantly change between complete darkness with only a hint of light at any one time. The rotation between light and darkness could be symbolic to the social ideals of each Catherine, that being freedom and stability. Vincent goes between the two throughout the story and has failed to accept any one route yet. There is an element of fear involved for Vincent when selecting a certain path, hence why Shadow Vincent lurking in the darkness throughout the level could be symbolic to this. To further elaborate, as cheesy as it sounds, this thing can also be linked to this level. In darkness, there is always light. In light, there is always hope. 
in hope there is always love. Like I mentioned earlier, Vincent is starting to go insane. Nevertheless, he is on a path to earning true freedom. He isn't alone. He just has to stay committed and things will begin to fall into place. On top of all the amazing aspects about Catherine's puzzles, there is so much at play in this boss fight from a thematic and symbolic perspective. The player can be infinitely more engaged if there are numerous meaningful layers to the gameplay and experience as a whole. Catherine understands what it really means to be intense, engaging and so much more while simultaneously setting itself apart from everything else. Everything from the presentation, the ambition and its themes and symbolism just mesh together to create a highly captivating puzzle game. And let's not forget the fantastic finale where the player is forced to use all the things they've learned along their journey in new ways because of the larger scale of this particular encounter. This leads to a satisfying and powerful feeling of accomplishment. It's the perfect way to top off a phenomenal game. Atlas really outdone themselves here. Catherine is one of the best puzzle games I've ever played, and I won't be forgetting it anytime soon.